Welcome back to our third episode of the IHSA podcast. I am here with Drew Lacascio, Peter Hammett, and Tyler Deffaball. Um, kind of starting to, you know, get the, get right into it. Uh, player of the week last week, uh, Hammett. You want to kind of go through that for us? Yeah, thanks, Gavin. Um, we can start with the position player of the week. We had Carter Van Dever from Triad. He's a senior, uncommitted. Uh, he had a really good week. Went seven for seventeen. Hit four home runs, uh, two doubles, and had 10 RBIs. Uh, his best game was against Mater Dai. I don't know if I said that right. I hope I did. Um, when they won 19 Yeah, Mater, Mater Day. Yeah. Mater Day. There we go. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, he went yep. He went four for four, had three home runs in the one game. That was kind of really what sealed the deal for us. Um, we really thought the three-in-one game is uh, worthy of its own to be player of the week consideration um, and then four RBIs and three runs scored for him in that game as well. Aiden Flynn won our pitcher of the week. He's a junior uh, Southpaw from Marist going to Illinois. Uh, he threw a six inning no hitter against a really good Sandberg team. Um, 61 of his 91 pitches were for strikes. He uh, punched out 11, only walked two. Um, and yeah, so now on the year he's one and zero. He's got 16 innings, only given up nine hits, uh, struck out 21, only allowed four walks, and he's got a zero zero ERA. So he is throwing the ball really well for Marist right now, um, and hopefully he can keep that going for the rest of the year. Yeah, and uh, kind of looking at the Power 25 now, um, Drew will kind of get into this a little more for us, but not a lot of changes here uh, throughout. You know all 25 teams. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. Looking up and down the list, there wasn't a whole lot of movement. Um, weather was questionable early on last week for the majority of the state. Um, I know a lot of teams got some games in Friday, Saturday last week, um, but the top four teams remain the same. Uh, we've got Nazareth sitting at the top still at number one. They're 13-0 and now after a 2-0 and week. They took down Marist 8-4, to also took down St. Viator 13 to three. So they kind of cruised through the week. It was also two conference games. Um, also in the same conference in that East Suburban Catholic League is Juliet, who comes in at number two, holding strong right there. They only played one game last week. They took down St. Patrick 10 nothing. Uh, Aiden Hayes threw a no hitter in that game. Uh, and right behind them is St. Lawrence. Um, JCA and St. Lawrence are the top 3A teams in the in the state right now. St. Lawrence is 11 and 1. They had a 4 and 0 week. They went down to Florida, Bradenton, where they were at like the IMG uh national championship is what they called it and they they took home the championship for that that tournament. Um on the week some teams that you know we're not too familiar with here in Illinois. They played a couple of New Jersey teams, New York team, uh Florida team in the mix there. Um, they outscored opponents 36 to six on the week. Uh, so kind of a dominating performance for them down there, down South. Uh, and number four is Providence Catholic. They're at six and two. They, uh, they did have a loss on the week, but what some of these schools up here have been doing, I think, uh, brother rice is one of them, Lincoln way East, they go down to Louisville and they've been playing a three game set against St. Xavier and Trinity. Uh, Trinity is the number one team in Kentucky. St. Xavier, St. X is always one of the top teams in Kentucky. And uh, they went two and one. They they beat Trinity, the number one team in the uh, in the Kentucky Power 25 rankings. And then they split split with St. X. Um, And number five, this is a new number five for this week. It's Edwardsville. They climbed one spot. Um, they currently have a seven and five record, which does not tell the whole story. Um, they've played the best, the best strength of schedule in the state. Um, and then they just recently went three and oh, two of their toughest games they'll have all year against O'Fallon, um, in the Southwestern conference. And they took down O'Fallon six to three, and then they knocked them off 16 to two. Uh, and then they went over to Missouri, played one of the top teams in Missouri, Francis Howell. And they knocked them off six to three. So Edwardsville, they're right back on track. Three and a week, seven and five. Um, I think that that record is going to continue to look a lot better as we move forward here. Uh, they are our new number five team. At number seven, we have Manuka. They're seven and three coming off a of three and a week. They took down Romeoville one nothing, Joliet Central fifteen to four, and Nequa six to three. 
Uh, so a good week there from Minooka. We've talked on them a lot. They are a talented group, um, and they are sitting at number seven. And then we've got Normal Community, uh, one of the top teams coming out of Central Illinois right now. They've got arms for days. Uh, they've got enough position players, and they continue to roll. They are 12-0, and 3-0 and week. Gavin, if you want to touch on anything more on them. Yeah, no, I mean, we've talked quite a bit about them, you know, the past few weeks. But like you said, ton of arms, a lot of talented arms, senior bats. Um, and then just quickly to mention, Jonah Roper had a 10 strikeout performance against Champaign Central. He's an uncommitted junior. So just a name to know um, and one to watch for the rest of the spring. Yeah. Another team we've been touching on a lot is Mascuda. They're at number 12, uh, three in a week. They're 12 and one on the year. And they also dominated this week, um, outscoring opponents 32 to eight. And Lincoln Way West is coming in at number 14. They had a two and a week. They scored 73 runs. Um, is that is that correct? Is that on, on the, the year? On the season. Yeah. On the season yeah. so far. Yeah. So in eight games, they've scored 73 runs, um, just shy of of 10 runs a game there. So that offense. Is uh, is clicking. They look to be in midseason form, and we know they've got a couple arms there that that definitely can lead the way with Essenberg and Lucas Acevedo and others. Um, so that's just a little rundown of the top there, Gavin. Some teams to note. Yeah. Some teams kind of playing good baseball right now, coming off strong weeks. Um, I know there were a couple other risers that you may want to touch on. Yeah. So I mean, we had three risers this week. Um, that made, you know, kind of more, a little bit significant jumps, but kind of like I mentioned earlier, there's really not much changing in this power 25, but you know, Crystal Lake South, they're eight and no, two and no week triad. They're eight and four. They had a two and no week and Sycamore, they're six and no, and they had a two and no week. So undefeated weeks, you know, you can't drop them. Um, you know, after a week like this, not a lot of teams are playing games. So when they go two and no, you know, naturally they're going to move up a little bit. So Crystal Lake South moving up one spot, Triads moving up three spots, and Sycamore's moving up three spots as well. So um, really solid teams there. So um, one to keep an eye on, you know, throughout the rest of the spring. But there's a couple of teams that are new to the Power 25 this week. Um, so I think Hammett's going to take us through that a little bit. Yeah, we got Geneva sliding in at number 18. They're 8-0. Um they have some guys that are absolutely rolling in that lineup. So it's really no surprise that they are off to the start. They are uh, Nate Stempowski, um, senior Judson commit. He was one of our player of the weeks not too long ago. Um, so Nate Stempowski, Colin Mickelson, Bryce Breon, Michael Tool, Sam Sikora, all have at least 20 at bats and are all hitting over 400. So um, yeah, when you got, bats that are doing that collectively um to that depth it's going to be hard to lose some games um, and then sakura also has uh seven stolen bases on here right. and then yeah looking at their arms they got seth kisner uh assigned senior he's struck out 15 in 13 innings um he's repping a 3-2 era with a 2-0 record josh folks he is an unsigned senior as well and he has 11 strikeouts and 11.1 innings also repping a 2-0 uh, record with a 0.6 ERA. Yeah, and they were a team, uh, Pete, just coming in. You know, we, we knew about Geneva. Um, they were on our list. But a lot of what we do in the preseason is based off of what the high school coaches send us in our preseason questionnaire. It gives us a ton of valuable information, learning about the clubs. Um, we, we did not receive anything on Geneva. So they were a club that they were kind of going to have to prove it. Um, cause we weren't very sure we have not seen them this early in the season and they have proved it. They're eight. No, now, um, they had a player of the week. They've been playing really good baseball. You dig into the numbers and they've got a lot of impressive stuff going on for them right now. Um, you, you hit on some of the main things and they're going to be a team. We're going to need to go out and watch, check out. They looking up and down their roster have a lot of seniors. And if I were a college coach, somebody that still needs 2024s, it looks like they have a lot of unsigned seniors. Um, so they would be a club that I would be just making note of if I was a school still looking for, for some 24s, whether it's on the mound or position players. It seems like they've got a bunch of them. Um, so Geneva, you know, happy for them. They had another really good week, got into the Power 25 for the first time, and uh, excited to see how they, how they roll from here. Yeah, for sure. 
Um, and then we also got Sandberg sliding in at number 24. Uh, they're eight and one. They've been off to a good start. They're a team we've liked so far from start this year. Um, and then they earned their way in three a week this past week. Um, they took down Stag seven to two, uh, Fornwood twelve to two, and Bradley Bourbon A five to four. So a couple of good wins there. Um, and then they're arguably one of their top wins of the year. They took down Brother Ice earlier, which was kind of what caught our attention. Uh, earlier in the year, they beat them four to two, and they're a good team. They're always really good. It's a big school. They got guys running through there nonstop, um, and they got a real ace with Nick Bestrick, who can run it up to ninety with uh, a few other pitches uh, to miss bats. So yeah, that's another team we like, and uh, they're getting their first crack at the Power Twenty Five this week. Yeah, so kind of looking at some of these teams that are outside of our Power Twenty Five. Um, you know, York is seven and one. They were kind of knocking on the door this week. They were a team that we talked about that, you know, could potentially hop in there at some of those, you know, two open slots that we had. But um, Hampshire, they're six and zero. Glenbrook North is seven two and one. Glenwood is eight and two. Uh, Morris is eight and two. Normal U High is nine and three. East Peoria is eleven and one. Uh, Conant is six and one. Bartlett is seven and three. Uh, Nashville's 14 and 0. St. Joseph Ogden is 14 and 2. Highlands 10, 0 and 1. Sacred Heart Griffin is 11 and 1. Wheaton Academy is 9 and 1. Uh, Lockport is 6, 4 and 1. And then Evanston is 7, 2 and 1. Um, so, you know, Hampshire, you know, they're 6 and 0, Tyler. Um, kind of take us through their team and, and what you know about them. Yeah, I mean, it starts with their trio of arms and Anthony Karbowski, uh, who's going to Louisville. And then they've got Wilson Wemhoff and Kalen Scheider, who are a pair of uncommitted juniors that are both really talented in their own right as well. Uh, and they knocked off Hersey last week, uh, which effectively knocked Hersey out of our top 25. And Hampshire is a team that's going to start playing some of the better teams in the Fox Valley uh, region starting this week. So we're, we're really going to find out what they're made of uh, here soon. Yeah, and then Glenbrook you know, and, North too, you know, 7-2-1, and one, Tyler. Um, you know, another team to watch there. Yeah, uh, Nick Djukovic is an uncommitted senior arm for them who's thrown the ball really well for them so far this spring. Uh, and then they also have Ethan Bass, who, you know, it probably goes without saying is one of the top sophomores, not, e not in the state, but even in the entire country. So um, those are two big-time arms for them. And then they also have Chase Peterson, who's a bat to know on offense. And then uh moving down touching on lockport real quick i know we've touched on them a little bit before on this podcast but they're six four and one uh it's a team that's really got a good mix of of older guys and younger guys as well cal carosa is the ace of that team going to McHenry county junior college uh they also have nathan burdak who's an arm for them to know he also plays uh up the middle he's going to triton and then they also have jack Sheik, i believe is how you say it uh, he's a sophomore arm to know, uh, pitches a ton for them, uh, and is definitely definitely an arm to watch. And then you got Adam Kozak and Colton Benitez on offense, who are two sophomore bats to know. Colton Benitez has been off to a great start this spring, and we've touched on Adam Kozak, who really emerged for me down at the kickoff classic to start the year. So yeah. just some teams for me to watch there. Are they uh, – they're doing a little something different with Dylan Nagel this year too, it looks like. It, he's done a lot of closing, and I know that he started last year. So probably speaks to the depth they have with the arms. They're able to mix and match and see where he fits in best for the club. But that was something that I've just noticed off of box scores and stuff. I don't know if you had anything more on that, Tyler. Yeah, for sure, and that that's a good note. Uh, Dylan Nagel is a really talented arm for them. can run his fastball up to 90. We've heard reports that he can run it up even higher than that. Uh, has a really nice white pound slider to go with it. Uh, came in to close at the kickoff classic when I saw him and uh, just a really impressive arm. Nice. Yeah. And then, you know, kind of going back up to the top here, we're looking at Glenwood. Uh, they're eight and two, two and oh, uh, week here. And they're kind of a team that we've been back and forth, you know, seeing if they're going to be a team that can get into the power 25. And I mean, they're close, you know, they beat brother rice early in the season at the kickoff classic um, they have one of the top arms in the state in Cam Appenzeller, and then um, they got a 26, Dylan Huff. You know, he was one of the, the arms that pitched in relief against that Brother Rice team and really shut them down. So um, they're, they're a talented team, and, and Glenwood's one of those schools that always has, uh, you know, arms coming through. So 
um, you know, kind of looking at Morris now, Drew, eight and two. Yeah, and they're in the same boat, uh, Gavin. They they are an interesting team. I saw them down at the kickoff classic. Uh, Jack Wheeler, Illinois commit, he's kind of like the name on that team, but they've got a lot of good players. Um, Zimi Bafteri at shortstop made a couple good plays, and, and I'm sure I butchered that name, so I apologize. But, um, you know, he showed me a little something at shortstop. Uh, they've got some pieces all around the diamond, and – I actually saw them blow a game against Freeburg. They were cruising. They were up 5 nothing going into the last inning, and they were using a lot of arms on that day. And um, the arm they brought in in the seventh struggled. They go to the reliever, and he struggles. And before you knew it, uh, they lost that game 6-5. to five. So that 8-2 and two record, I mean, very easily could be 9-1. and one. Um, A win over Manuka. They they are just a team we're going to have to watch. We're going to have to keep eyes on because they top to bottom their lineups, one of the stronger lineups, um, just as far as tough outs. Um, nothing, no crazy like, oh, my gosh, this is, you know, D1 prospects up and down the lineup. But when it comes to high school, you know, there's no easy outs in that lineup. Um, and it looks like they're going to have enough pitching with Keegan Waters and some other guys. Um, so we are going to, we're going to see on them, but they are on our radar. Yeah. And then looking at normal U high, uh, they're nine and three. Um, they're one of those schools, especially down here in central Illinois that just typically has uh, really good arms that maybe we don't know a ton about, but, um, you know, Will Paxson for them, he's a, he's an uncommitted junior. He's been absolutely dominant. Uh, last week in our diamond notes, we, uh, made mention that he hasn't given up a run this year. Um, and, you know, he's kind of one to watch and see how he does the rest of the spring for this uh, Pioneers team. Um, and then Charlie Veracruz, you know, he's their senior leader. He's going to Notre Dame. Uh, shortstop, he'll pitch for him too. Um, but this is, a you know, a really good team this year. And, and sometimes, you know, we weren't sure at the beginning of the year how they were going to be. But, you know, coming out 9-3, and three, they're, they're going to be one to watch here in Central Illinois and throughout the state too. Um, and then East Peoria, 11-1, and one, you know, Last year, they had a really good season, too. Um, but, you know, they're off to a hot start. Only one loss. Um, Kurt Sosnowski is the uncommitted senior. Um, I saw him pitch last year, and, you know, he was low 80s, threw strikes. Um, and, you know, he's just one to know and kind of keep an eye on. And he'll also play uh, infield for him. And he's, a, I think, third or fourth uh, in the lineup for him, too. So, uh, seems a good name there. Seems like a producer. From what I've gathered, Gavin, just yeah. gets it done in game, on the mound, and with the bat. And I just wanted to mention something with normal U High and Will Paxson. Uh, that was an arm that came out of nowhere this winter. And it's actually Steve Paxson's son, the head coach there at normal U High, could not be happier for Will. It is a, it's a real frame uh, that has room to grow. And the arm really works. And to see him kind of do his thing this spring and, and dominate, to be honest, like he's – he has been shutting down good teams, not just, you know, random one-off teams. It's been good lineups he's been pitching against. So really happy to see him do his thing down there and kind of lead the way for normal. And I'll let you touch on anything else for East Peoria. I just wanted to touch on that. So thank you. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, and yeah, East Peoria, you know, I mean, they've throughout their lineup, they have guys that are just going to compete, it seems like. But, um, you know, RJ, Jun RJ Dunshin, uh, he's a name that we saw this winter and uh, I think he's been, you know, hitting DH for them, but he's also a catcher and just kind of one to know uh, down there. And then Landon Hidden too, um, just another name to know for that Raiders squad. Uh, but looking at Conant and Bartlett, you know, Conant six and one and Bartlett seven and three. Uh, Hammett, you want to kind of take us through their their teams? Yeah, I mean, I'll touch more on them uh, later on when we go over the game that I saw. But I really liked Conant. Um, Conant. Conant. I, I I knew that actually. Um, Conan, um, I like their lineup. It's dynamic. They got athletes at the top, a lot of really good frames throughout the lineup. That was, they're one of the more physical looking teams that I've seen all year. Um, and they got some power in there too. Um, it's a, I mean, they, they, they lost to Bartlett eight to six, but it was a really good game. Um, you, I could tell that they were a very good team. Um, and their record showed that, um, they were six and zero going into that game. Uh, they got some arms, too. Uh, Logan Gale threw for them. I'll talk about him a little later. Um, and they had a really nice arm come out of the pen. Um, and then Bartlett, uh, they another really solid team, top to bottom. Um, they're 7-3. and three. 
they uh, they got some good underclassmen with Brandon Pell's sophomore, Josh Kalazi uh, sophomore, um, and they got some seniors that'll help fill out the the rest of the the lineup. That are uh, they're all very good as well. That's uh, just a really solid all around team. Yeah, and then um, you know Nashville, fourteen and zero. Uh, they're a, they're a team from Southern Illinois that's just kind of one to watch out for. I think they're typically a a really talented squad down there. Um, and then St. Joseph Ogden, uh, they're fourteen and two. We've talked about them a little bit, but uh, you know Luke Landris, he's an Illinois commit. Uh, he's an arm, you know, that's been up to I believe ninety uh, that we saw him at the kickoff classic. And you know they've had a three and zero week, so they're a good team to know down here in Central Illinois and, and one of those top two A programs in the state. Um, and and uh, go ahead. no, just to touch on St. Joe Ogden, I mean, you hit it right on the head. Like they are year in, year out, really talented. And they do have a guy this year in Luke Landris and he may pitch for them, you know, cause he is athletic and has arm strength, but he's, he's their most potent bat. He's their best athlete. He can play all around the diamond. He catches, he can play shortstop, you know, his future may be center field with the way he moves and, just the way he kind of he's light on his feet and can cover ground and he's very rangy um, and he's got a big arm like you said it's it's firm on the mound but they're they're really well coached down there um, and I just I think that's going to be a team that's going to be one to be reckoned with come playoff time so they uh, they deserve a little a little love and I wanted to get in there so thank you yeah for sure um, and just I want to briefly mention you know Sacred Heart Griffin too uh, they're eleven and one. They had a one-in-one one week, so their first loss in the year. But, I mean, they're another one of those, you know, central Southern Illinois teams that they're typically a really good program and have some good good names coming through there. So, so looking at Wheaton Academy, uh, you know, they're 9-1. and one. Um, They're off to a hot start. So, Hammy, you want to kind of take us through that? We're not super familiar with them, uh, but they do have Eric DaCosta. He is a – well, he was a, a bat initially, and we really liked him with the bat. And um, – he t- he's kind of turned into an arm lately, uh, the past year or so. Um, he can run it up into the low 90s, and I'm sure he's still hitting for them. Um, and there's some real power in that bat. So he, on his own, can help carry that team to some wins for sure. And then, you know, the last team here that we've kind of been looking at is Evanston. They're 7-2-1. and one. Um, And kind of like Drew mentioned earlier, you know, with some of these teams that um, we didn't have a, any information preseason on Evanston, but we knew, you know, last year, uh, they had a good team. Um, so we assumed, you know, coming into this year, they'd probably be just as talented and, you know, they're off to a seven and two and one start. Um, and they're going to be one to watch out for and, you know, potentially find their way into the power 25, uh, sometime this year. But, um, you know, also throughout this week or this past week, um, myself, Tyler and, and him that were able to, um, get out to some games, uh, luckily, even though it rained all week, pretty much throughout Illinois, a lot of games were canceled, but Towards the end of the week, we were able to get out to some games, and um, I was able to go see Morton and Canton. Um, really good game. Morton had a lot of you know good arms. They probably threw their best arms that game. But I just want to mention Ryan Shaftnett. He's an uncommitted junior. He's a six foot six, probably two twenty. I mean, he is really good frame on him. And I saw him last year, and he's only getting stronger, only getting bigger. Uh, he was a mid eighties fastball change up that he just threw for strikes anytime he wanted, any count. Um, I believe I had seven swing and misses tallied for him there on that pitch. Uh, and he's just a really good arm. He's able to command, actually command, throw it where he wants, when he wants. Um, the breaking ball is still developing a little bit, but, um, you know, he, he can throw it for strikes when he wants to at the bottom of the zone. Um, but, you know, as, he, as that velo continues to tick up, I mean, he's definitely going to be one that, you know, people are going to want to get on and get on early, I assume. So uh, really good look at Ryan, and, and I'm happy for him to see that, you know, he's kind of making big strides after, you know, a, a year where I think in the past year he's kind of been injured. So um, seeing him get on the mound and, and do what he's doing, and I think throughout this entire year so far, he's just been dominant, constantly throwing strikes. Um, so he's one to know. Yeah, and Shafton is going to be, you know, one of those names for the Potters to – to watch out for he'll he'll probably find a lot of wins this year uh every time he takes them out and and help morton uh you know continue to climb and, and have a better year so um you know in another game we went out to this this spring or this past weekend you know tyler went and saw mount carmel and de la salle yeah and uh, i mean it starts with ian tosi on the mound uh from mount carmel got the start 
Uh, right now he's number 19 in the state and, and he looked apart. Um, his velo was down a few ticks uh, from when we last saw him. Uh, but we've touched on that before on this show is you're not always going to have your, your A stuff. Um, you know, you may have your B or your C stuff and, and Ian Tosi made it work. Uh, he was 80 to 84, uh, really impressed me with his, his bulldog mentality on the mound, uh, pitches with a ton of confidence and a ton of swagger. Uh, his changeup was really good on Saturday, had a ton of arm side tumble and was really effective against the right-handed hitters in the De La Salle lineup. Um, punched out seven over six and a third and just we'll have to continue to monitor him. He, he's been off to a great start this spring. Uh, and then both shortstops in the game, Joey Ireland for Mount Carmel and, and Kenny Perez for De La Salle were, were both super impressive on both sides of the ball. Joey Ireland's a, a sophomore. He's committed to Illinois. Uh, he's ranked within the top 10 in the state for us. Uh, he's just outside the top 150 nationally. So Super impressive kid. He he's starting to look more and more physical in that body, and and Kenny Perez looked phenomenal uh, with the bat. Nearly left the yard twice, uh, hitting two doubles, and then Kenny Perez. We we've known him to be a, a solid defender at short, and he he looked every bit of the part. <clears throat> Just very smooth, very clean, um, and he's going to Western Illinois and is ranked within the top thirty for the state for us. And uh, Tyler. I was really curious about this game because Ian Tosi was a guy I saw last year in the spring, late in the spring, in the playoffs, um, pitching against Brother Rice. And had Brother Rice beat through six innings, uh, Brother Rice ends up coming back. Um, they get to Tosi in the seventh, and then they end up making their run to state. But I loved Tosi. Like, you hit on it, bulldog mentality. He was a freshman last year pitching in that environment, was unfazed, challenged with the fastball, went to that changeup anytime he wanted to. And even in that start, he was probably 79 to 81, touching 82, maybe a three. So, you know, I hear at this outing, he's 80 to 84. Um, one unique thing that Tosi has going for him is – he can pitch with that lower velo with that fastball because if you start, if you break down his numbers, look at how his fastball plays. He gets a ton of IVB, the induced vertical break. So his ball's riding as it's getting through the zone and he misses bats. Um, that 80 to 84, especially with the fact that he's throwing that change up anytime that he wants to, it plays way up. Um, it plays way up. He's still able to get swing and misses in the zone with the fastball. I'd be curious, like, you know, did he get swing and misses in the zone? It looks like he punched out seven over six and a third. So I'm sure he was missing bats, but um, I'm not so, so particularly worried about Tosi's velo um, because the way that he operates, the way he has success um, isn't all about the velo. And I think the velo is going to come with him because he's got the quick arm. Um, it comes out of his hand really good. Like I do think it'll naturally tick up, but I love to hear that he was still performing, competing, getting strikeouts, and getting that many strikeouts with 80, 80 to 84 mile an hour fastball, uh, I think says a lot to him. So he's certainly high on our list. You mentioned he's 19th in the state, uh, uncommitted left hander, and he's a strike thrower that competes, that's got more velo to come. I mean, that's really all you can ask for um, out of these arms. You know, you'll. You'll get some guys that maybe throw harder, but don't command it that way. Don't compete the way that he competes. And uh, I can't say enough about him because he came in this winter and was up to 87. Uh, really, really intrigued us. Um, so we know it's in there, and he's going to be the the leader of that staff. And uh, excited to see what the future holds for him. So, no, thank you for the breakdown. And um, that that is certainly a name that that should be on a lot of coaches' radars. Yeah, and then kind of looking at uh, Conant and Bartlett. Uh, Hammett was at that game, so Hammett will kind of take us through that game and, and some of the top guys you saw. Yeah, that was a really good game. Uh, two really good clubs going at it. Conant was undefeated at the time. Uh, Bartlett was 6-3. and three. Uh, Logan Gale took the mound for Conant. Um, he struggled with strikes, but the arm talent for me was pretty real. I mean, we have him ranked 184 in the state. Uh, he's going to Parkland. Um, it was jumping out of his hand um, with sink um, up to 85. Good breaking ball to go with it. Um, I just thought it was noteworthy, just the arm talent alone. I think he'll be just fine. 
Um, I think it was his first start of the year, if I'm remembering remembering correctly. So, you know, not taking too much stock into that. I heard he was throwing well during during inner squads and all that. So he'll be just fine. Um, and then they went to Connor Kehoe right away out of the pen. He's a guy that we saw um, this past winter. Um, he's got some funk in his delivery. He's got a really high, quick leg lift, and then he comes over the top. He was cruising 81, um, going to a really good breaking ball. Um, he went, I believe, five and a third innings. Um, so he pitched the majority of that game, and he was really good for him. He kept uh, Bartlett at bay after that first inning. Um, and then Jake Parpet, he handles the staff for them at Conan. Um one of the premier defensive catchers that I've seen in the state so far, uh, just the way he was taken IO, um, it's legit. I mean, his, uh, his glove to hand release is quick. The ball carries, it plays true. And then in game, he's vocal. Um, he's active. He's moving around to block the ball. Um, he's a guy that you look at, play the game. You're like, yeah, that's who I want catching me or catching my staff. Um, and then they got Cooper Hansen at shortstop. He's a guy we've liked as well. Good actions on the infield. Um, hitterish look. I really liked his at bats. I don't think he did anything. I don't, he maybe had a hit, but that, that'd be it. Um, but I just really liked his at bats. He's left-handed hitter. He's short to the ball. He's quick. He's direct. I think it's going to play in game. Um, and then Matt Mays, he had a good game. He was their cleanup hitter. Um, Really good looking friend. So Conan, they have a few uh, football players on the team. Um, I believe Matt Mays is one of them, and he definitely looks like it. Um, he's definitely strong, uh, but there is a lot more room in there too. Uh, it's a very athletic and trim look, um, and he swings a heavy barrel from the left side. Uh, I was in on that swing. And then going over to Bartlett, uh, they went with Brandon Pels uh, to start it. He's a sophomore that we've liked in the past. Um Athletic look. I think he first popped at the state games, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but he showed an uptick in velocity this this winter, so we wanted to go see how real it was in game. Uh, and it's it was pretty much real, or uh, just as good, if not better, than what I was expecting, at least. He went four innings, struck out eight, uh, didn't allow a walk. Um, yeah, he was sitting the, with the fastball about 83 to 85, but he would reach back for 88, 89, which is really not something that you see kids do, especially not that age where he's um, he's saving some in the tank for when he really needs it. And then, I mean, it, it was quite the difference going from 83 to 89, and uh, he was missing bats doing that for sure late in the count. Um, going to a really good slider, too. That was getting a lot of whiffs, and then he was uh, selling the changeup with arm speed in the mid seventies. So it's real, uh, real field to pitch for him. Um, he's only going to get better as he gets older. And then Josh Kalazi, he came out of the pen. Um, he was hitting the leadoff for him too. Uh, he's a bat we have liked in the past. He's got a heavy barrel um, from the right side, but he was cruising in the low eighties with a really good breaking ball. Um, he closed it out, had a really clean inning. And then Dylan Tornero, he was a uh, a senior that had a little breakout game. I think he had three hits on the day. That's a simple, um, quick swing. He showed the ability to stay through it. He could cover the plate. He was going uh, fastball on the outer half, took it over the, uh, through the middle, and then he pulled one to the right field line. Uh, good little bat they got there in the middle of their lineup. Good stuff, Pete. Um, one guy you mentioned, and just digging in on him a little bit, I think it's – he probably warrants a, a little more attention. Is Cooper Hansen uh, playing shortstop there for Conan? He's he's an unsigned senior from everything that I see on his profile, on his social media. Uh, he's ran a six seven three for us in the past, so it's it's a well above average athlete that swings left handed and can play up the middle of the field and. I mean, if you are a school out there looking for players, um, he he should be high on your radar, I would think. Um, so that that's good that you got a good look at him. And Brandon Pels, just kind of going off what you said, he's he has a chance to be a high-level sophomore. Um, he's a name that we've been keying on for a while. I loved the pen this winter at the preseason All-State. Comes out of his hand really good. And uh, I see that velocity just continuing to, to jump as we go. Um, and just appreciate you guys breaking down the games that you saw. And for anybody that's not aware, like they only mentioned 
a couple names from each game, maybe some standouts, but you can find a full on uh, deep dive in our scout blogs throughout the spring. Um, We try to update them as soon as we can after games and we'll pump them out. We'll tweet them out, you know, as soon as we get the write-ups done, we put video in there. Um, But any and all games that we see in the spring, you know, that to me is, is the gold mine on where you would go to find who, who showed well to us. Um, Any other outlying, maybe velos pop times home to first like you'll you'll get a lot more out of that um than just a couple minutes here talking um so please make sure to dive into that along with the power 25 update we do do this podcast now um but as always we'll still put it on paper we'll break down you know what teams beat what teams um who's rising who's falling who do we need to watch and uh give you a little more inside information on that but i'll turn it over to gavin smith yeah. Yeah, thanks, guys. Um, so that'll wrap it up for our, our third episode of the IHSA podcast. Um, be sure to give us a um, follow on Twitter and our Instagram and then subscribe to our YouTube to uh, make sure you don't miss any of these updates that we have, whether it's with our IHSA podcast that we do or player rankings or anything else that we have coming forward with uh, our YouTube channel. So appreciate you guys checking this out and uh, we'll see you next week.